And the third one is a paper that was published by some of our erudite scholars. We can see uh, their names on the paper here. Our able president, Dr. Misbal, and Dr. Misbal, Dr. Timothy, and Dr. Cousin, and so and and some of their colleagues in their lab. Now, my question is: looking at this slide, there are two things that are dominant on this slide. Can any one of us just give us a, a, like a, a kind of girl, two things that are dominant on this slide that we can see clearly? You know, we just close our eyes, or open our eyes. The first thing that we're going to see on this slide, or two things that we're going to see that are dominant. So the floor is open for anyone that can attend the, uh, the answer. Are we together? Yeah, we are together. There is a question on the floor now. This slide before us, there are two things that are dominant on this slide. Just two things that are very dominant. Yes. Like so the that... first one is the tries, which uh, is on the yellow background, and the Bob image, it has something like a setting logo in it. I think those are the two. On the entire slide, I, 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 on the entire slide, this is one you, you want to just explain now is one of this one of the picture on the slide. So we have three items. And the second one here is the poster. And the third one, you are close to the answer. <laughs> yeah, on the second one. Okay, on the second. I think other person should make attempts. <laughs> yeah, so I'll... Uh, brother, what do you mean, brother? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, one of the things uh, that is dominant on the slide is color. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> no, I'll buy you little. <laughs> Please note that now. We'll buy you yeah. little. <laughs> color, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You just nail it. That is another thing. Oh, number two, maybe the structure. Can I, can I talk? Yeah, yeah. If you can make a tent, president won't be it too. I know I got it. I just want to make a tent. I'm right. Yeah, I'm just joking. The, I think a picture and color, like he said. Picture. No, you don't. Picture is answered already. Okay. And there's one other thing that is. Thank you. I like, think they are they, they are text. Thank you. Text. Who just said text? Who said text? It's me, Mr. Isaac, right? Yes, sir. Sangju? Yes, from Sangju. Oh, no, yes, you're very cool. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah, they are talking about dominance on, on, the, on the slide. And Mr. Prentice was also right. There, is, there are two pictures. We have the picture of the lady here. There's a picture here, and there's another picture. The major thing that are dominance on, on, on the slide, those are the things. We have the color. And we have the text. So that is taking us back to the title of the of the presentation, the color theory. All the text, for example, look at look at this paper now. This journal, they have the way they arrange their text. They have the way they arrange their text. If you look at here, from here to here, there's a space. Same thing space between these texts and the way they arrange it, the, the affiliation of all the authors, all of these, all of these, including this, then the entire interface. This theory or this science is what we call typography. So we call typography. Yeah, we can move into the class number now. The next thing is, uh, I say we have the class is going to be in, in two phases. The first, first one is about the color theory. So in our color theory, we're going to know what color is. Then the color theory as a whole. Then color scheme. Why are all of these important that I've said? If you if so, if you don't understand how to mix colors on how to arrange our text, so most of the time our presentation might not look uh, professional. And as, as a researcher, as much as we are doing well in our research, if our presentations are not looking good, 
Uh, it, won't, it won't speak very good well of us. So if you look at this slide now, we have colors here. And if you notice, all of the colors that we have on this slide here, they have code. And this we're going to talk about more as we go into the presentation. Now, I'm coming back to us again. There's a question before us, what is color? Uh, I'm not asking for a standard definition, but I'm just asking for what we think color is. The floor is open for everyone again for the question, what color is? Anyone can make attempts? Color, what is color? Is anyone there, Mr. Moderator? Yes, I'm here. I see you. I'm asking what color is. And this is the interesting part of the presentation. It's very important as we, we understand what color is. Mr. Gogo. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, very correct. No, 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 I'm not joking. Very correct. Very, very correct. Very, very correct. Very, very correct. Another thing. Thank you so much, Doctor. Color is what distinguish one object from another. Thank you so much, Doctor. Yeah, as everyone has said, color um or let me just say color has different uh, uh, meaning to different kind of people. For the scientists, they can even tell you that color is just light. As we study in physics, we white light, like all of that, RGB, and it makes it like use the color. Also, when you talk to people that are psychologists, the definition goes along with what uh, engineer Vasukori just told us now. It has to do with sensations. It's what you're seeing, what your eyes is telling you that you're seeing. And in different as I said, everyone has a definition to color. When I came across these definitions on Oxford, in Oxford Dictionary and Wikipedia, <laughs> What the Wikipedia is telling us is it says the property possessed by an object of producing different sensation on, on the eyes as a result of the way the object reflects or lights or, or, or emits lights. This is, is a very simple definition that we can understand as when you just the way you're looking at me now on the screen, my my this is my picture. The lights behind me is telling you something. And the screen at my, at my front right now is the one that is happy to see a little bit part of my eye, or my face, sorry. If I put more lights right now, you can see more of it. And this has to do with changing the, the opening of the retina of our eyes, as we have studied in biology and some part of the eye that functions in connection with the brain. The next thing is, um, the next definition that, is, that we come about is visual perpetual property derive, deriving from spectrum of light interacting with the photoreceptor. Photoreceptor here is the eyes. That's the, the, the part of the eye that is thing the retina, the, the retina is what is called that, uh, that receptor. Now, now that we understand what color is, this picture here, I'm coming with another question. What color is this picture? What color, this picture on this slide now, what color can we say this picture is? Anyone can make a thing? This flower, oh, sorry, the picture as a whole. What color can we say this picture is? I don't know if anyone can make a thing. <laughs> Engineer. <laughs> yeah, what's your question? I thought you wanted to talk. Oh. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. 
yellow orange. Yeah, I was I I the, the answer is just very clear and it's just direct. So my just say the color here is yellow, and meanwhile we have other color that in it. What he said is just the correct answer. The color that dominates more and other color that are supporting it. So this picture contains various uh, variant of colors, variants. If you look at this here, this is, I, can, I don't know what color to call it, maybe navy blue or something of that blue. This is orange. This is yellow. And we can have some part of green here. So these are the color that we have in this picture. So as we move on, when we know how to identify most of this color, we'll be able to mix them properly to give those that will look at our that, that will look at our posters, our presentations, a kind of sensation that, that will make them feel relaxed looking at our, our watch, looking at our presentation or our posters. The next thing is color theory. Color theory is, is defined as the as the science of our science and art of using colors. As I've said the other time, most of let, let me just go to uh, the the contemporary world that we are. Every brand that we know, every brand that we know, let's say it's Coca-Cola and all that things that we know, like Coca-Cola, um any products that we know. They have their color that they that, that is dominant. That you know, when you see this color, you know you're talking. For example, Amazon. Amazon. Look at Android now. Android has its own color. That whenever you see this color, you already know it's Android, including the type of typeface that they use. What is this one is called typeface? This letter, the, the text says is, is typeface. And when you look at this, you know this color is what is for Coca-Cola. This is Amazon. This is Facebook. So Every product, every company, every brand has its own specific color that is known with them that this is, this is their color. Even our, our association, when you look at our logo, there are about three to four colors. Then we have green, we have uh, the red, and that red, I think, is it's the KMU color. The green, the coat of arm, we have black, we have red, all of those on the color. That is signifying our own country. So the yes, I, the science or the art of mixing these colors, using this color in a very special way, unique way to your brand, to your own brand, is what is called color theory. As we are taught in primary school, the primary colors that we have, the major primary colors, the primary colors that we have, they are not more than three. We have red. We have blue and yellow. And if other colors that we have, we have the secondary color and you have the tertiary colors. But to get the secondary colors, you need to mix two primary colors to get another sec a secondary color. For example, now, the color in between red and yellow is what? Color in between red and yellow. Color between red and yellow is orange. Color between red and orange, uh, between red and yellow is orange. Color between yellow and blue is green. The color between red and blue is what? Purple. Purple. So if you look at this color wheel, color wheel is very important for those that do uh, graphics design and even for design of our posters. When you know what color, primary color, secondary color to mix together, you'll be able to come up with a poster that is unique. And as I know, when you have the unique poster and unique research, you might go with a very good award. Going forward, all of these you can see when you mix this red and yellow, yellow is this this is the secondary color here. This and this, uh, sorry, red, red and bl blue is second is a purple. When you mix this, so also when you continue to mix 
the secondary colors also, you will have a what, tertiary color. So the color between red and purple is another form of purple that might be called violet or something. And this is the reason why you have this color, which will be like this. You can see the family of yellow and the orange, they are in between what? They are in between red and yellow color. The family of green, they are in between yellow and what and blue color. In the family of manjeta, violet, all of it, they are in between what? Red and, and blue. Uh, what is next to be discussed is uh, what are warm and cool colors. And that, I think, in the next slide, we're going to discuss that. Uh, color combination, they are very important. When we, as I say, when we design our posters and our PPT, they are very, very important. That we, it's very important that we know how to combine color. And colors are not just combined. There are theories behind combining colors. For example, now, if you intend to use complementary colors, Complementary colors are color on the color wheel. This is color wheel. This is color wheel. They are colors that are directly opposite. They are directly opposite each other. For example, now, this is cyan and this red color. They are complementary color. It means when you have text or you have a background that, the background that is red and you have your text in this cyan, it will come out very well. It will, you will see that you will love it. Or when you have a background that is cyan, that is cyan, this color, and you have your text in red, you will definitely love it. So we can see other complementary colors here. You can see this and this will go with this. This and this, they are directly opposite. Orange and this blue, orange, this one and this blue, they go together. Yellow, this yellow and this blue, they also go together. In fact, let me show us. Uh, there's a website here that will show us where we can mix all of these. The second, the next color is the, uh, the monochromatic colors. That I will explain also. Analogous color, and you have the tra tradic color. Let me show us this site. Uh, yeah, let's come to this site, this website. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can do our color mixing by ourselves. So as we say, the complementary color, there are two colors that are directly opposite each other on, on the color wheel. For example, now, let's say I pick this color. This is red. This is red, where I'm pointing my this color. And the directly opposite color here is what? Is this color, which is cyan. So let's say I pick blue. Now, this will just give me an idea. When I have my background, for example, to be blue, if I want this, if I want my PPT to look so good, I need to use yellow for my what? For my text. Let's say I'm designing a cover page. So I pick another color. Let's say I pick green. It tells me the directly opposite color on the color wheel. So this is how complementary colors are mixed to get beautiful slides. Monochromatic color, these are colors. Let's say you're picking a single color. Let's say you're picking red now. Or you're picking orange. Shades of orange. When you look at this one, now this orange, it's the dark orange, which is outside the wheel. In between orange, there's another orange, is light. And as you see all these colors here, let me go back. Let me just show you here the complementary color now. This color, it has its own code. That's it's applicable in, on any application that you want to. Let's say you're using your Canva, Canva design, you're using um, Illustrator, or uh, this popular software for, for graphics. What is this popular software called? Uh, Photoshop, thank you so much. There's another one again that is popular before Photoshop came. Thank you so much. This code, when you copy paste them, they just give you the color automatically. And that's why when you're designing your PPT, the first thing you do, and that's what you'll be in our, in our next, next class, you must have arranged your color palettes. This is what is called color palettes. All of these, they're called color palettes. They're called color palettes. You have your color palettes, and when you want to color your text or something, you just pick those colors. You click, and on there you pick. Now let's go to monochromatic color. When you see, it, look at monochromatic. They are just it's just a single color having different shade. Now it's because I'm picking green. That's why it's giving me the shade of what of green. And you look at this green here. The code here is different. It's it's uh, ash two d d something. For this green, this is the code. Let's say I pick this. It gives me something similar. This is a pink color. Or I call it 
I don't know what to call it, maybe purple or something. But the codes are unique. So it means if I'm trying to do something that is that it's a, that, that that wants that I need to have chromatic color, I want to use just single color, I don't want to have too much color, then for me to have a beautiful design, it's very good to use a, a, a monochromatic shade of those colors. If I'm picking here only yellow, I pick shades of yellow. Let's say I pick yellow here now. This is it. It gives you something like this, like a lime color or something. You pick like that. Just go around. It gives you shades. Now, the next is uh, analogous. When you look at analogous, it's just three colors also. You have the color palette, but there are colors that are close to each other that are just following each other. For example, now look at this. You have blue, you have navy blue, you have cyan. These three colors also, they are called analogous. If you want to intend to have three colors and you don't want to use the shades of colors, you can combine these three. And when you finish your design with this, definitely going to come out. And all of these will, pre will see when we start our practical, maybe in the next class. That's why today, today is just going to be on no theories. And let's practicalize it also here now. And I look at color automatically, this system picks it. When I'm picking one color, it picks the, the next two for me. You can see them. Look at this. They are so close. When I pick one here now, it shows me this. So it's telling me. When I want to have a beautiful design, I can use the shade of these three colors. And you can see also they have their what their codes. Pick green. Excuse me, those colors that are following each other, three colors. Now, the next one is from the name, triadic color. It's also three colors. There are three colors that you are mix mixing together, but they are alternate. Alternate. This you follow each other. But this is going to be what alternates. You can see the, the color palette here now. I pick red. The alternate, the remaining two alternate color to red color is going to be what? Blue and green. If I'm picking cyan, it gives me maybe this and this. So let's even try the cyan. Come here, take your try the color, come to cyan. You can see for cyan, it's going to be what? It's going to be, I think it's blue. And what? Uh, maybe dark pink and lime, something lime. For those that know color, they know all of this thing very well. But I also sell any now. The next one is tetra the color from the word tetra. For those that are all of us, we are chemistry. We used to be chemistry student. Four colors also. Also in alternates, you can see an example of. The, if you look at this color palette, and these are these are examples of this, and, and that's also you can practicalize. When you pick one, it gives you the remaining three. When I pick one here, it gives me the remaining three. When I pick outside here, it gives me the remaining one. When I pick this, it gives me that is how they are. Moving forward, we already explained primary colors, secondary colors, and tertiary colors. The primary colors are the basic color, you have, and those are what they are yellow, red, and what and blue. The secondary color are the color in between those three colors. And the tertiary color are the colors in between the secondary colors. Moving forward, we have uh, warm and cool colors. And as you can see from this uh, graphics, now from this picture that I'm seeing here, you can see that all the colors from this uh, violet up to yellow here, they are all what? the warm color. Why do you need warm color? Sometimes you need to dark here, yeah, you need to make your picture or your graph your your image or your figure when i say figure now it might be a picture of your your research or or the process of your research that you're taking in the lab those are in experimental lab and what the pictures will come out because some sometimes the maybe the what the pub the 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 journal they have their own standard and when they detail their standards you can know how to improve them although i'm going to tell you some or some website later the way you can easily adjust your images to give you the standard required by the by the by the journal and the opposite directly opposite color that we have here they are the cool colors so all of these i think for those that want to go deeper we can visit this site to see more about colors going back to our slides i think we're done with the color theory so up to this point, I don't know if you have any concern. Going to the second part of the presentation. 
Do we have any concern, question as regards the first part on colors? Moderator, can we move on? Any question? No question. On the first part. Uh, no question, sir. Yeah, we're well, moving on. Yes. Second point on typography. And as I've said, I already gave us the brief of what typography means. This is also very important. If you already understand how to get beautiful combination of color, and you don't know how to select good typeface or good fonts, you end up not having a good presentation or a good uh, slide. Now, in this second part, we're going to be discussing what typography is, what are the elements of typography. Then, let's say you need a, a specific typography or a specific typeface that is required for you to do your PPT, and you don't have it on your system. And the explanation I want to make on this installation is going to be for Windows, for those that are using, um, uh, what is it called? They're using, what's this operating system called? Those are using uh, Apple products. I can't remember what the operating system called. The installation is going to be explained maybe in the next class. Yeah, when we look at this slide now, we can see this is what we want to discuss about how to have good arrangement of our text on our slide to make people look at this text and that uh, your slide and come back and say, how did you do this? So moving forward, typography as defined also from Wikipedia, I say it's the art of the art and techniques, technique of arranging type. When I say type, type means the text itself to make the written language legible, readable, and appealing when display. As I have said, it's if you know how to mix your color and you still don't know how to arrange your text. For example, look at this image that we have here now. It's, look at this beautiful arrangement. It's, it's, it's um, a page from, from Google that I've got. But this page just is similar to all these uh, expensive magazines that you see online. Look at the way the type is, the type is that is selected, the color that you can see, you can see. Also, I forgot to talk about light and dark colors. When you're using a light color for two contrasting texts, you shouldn't use light light. It should be light light and what and dark. When you're using a dark color, it should be for one text. The next text should be what should be light. And if you don't want to mix color, now your typography comes in. You can either change it to make it bold or make the other one the uh, uh, ordinary uh, text. That will explain the next slide. Moving forward, arrangement. The arrangement of type involves selecting typefaces when i say typeface i think there is something we usually mix mix when we talk about fonts and let me quickly show you something here let's say i select this now this this is what we usually call fonts this is what we call fonts yeah it is fonts but the real name is type typeface so if you have bold, let's say this is this is the, the, the font I'm having here is what is a Montserrat bold. This Montserrat bold has the variants. Uh, you can see here we have ordinary Montserrat, and the next one is Montserrat black. Montserrat, all of these, these are the fonts. One of these fonts is typeface. So I think we get that clearly. So the arrangement of the, the of type involved. Typeface, when I say type typeface, involves selecting good typefaces, the point, the size, the size of the font of the typeface, the line, the length. You can see this. This spans from here to here. This was spans from here to here. The line spacing, the spacing between this text, this and this. And the line spacing is called, it's called leading. That I'll show in the next uh, slide. And letter spacing, the space that we have in between these letters from this anatomy where we have A and A, the space between the A and N, N and A, C and O, M and Y, this is what is called uh, 
the, 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 the tracking, we call it the line spacing, as well as adjusting the space between the pairs of letters. The term typography is also applied to style, arrangements, appear and appearance of letters, numbers, and symbols. Well, in, in some slides, you might require to use numbers, as I've also used some of my slides. In symbols, you may require to use symbols. When you arrange your symbols, even in a, when we, we prepare our papers, times we need to put a, a image in the paper. Some journals will say you should prepare your images or your figures separately from your from your 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 paper, your, your manuscript. Some will say you should put you embed it into the manuscript. And I think Microsoft Word has that property that we are, <clears throat> where you can embed either you're embedding your text above the picture or below. I think we all know that. Now, the elements of typography, it's just, yeah, I just two. And I've explained them earlier. The fonts and what the typefaces. When I say fonts, I will explain what fonts is. Area bold is a font. Area itself is typeface because we have variants of area. We have area bold, area thin, area narrow, like that, all of those. The major elements that we have that we need to understand about typography is selecting the right typeface and the font. Now, look at this New York uh, Times. I just, I got this also from Google. Uh, I'm supposed to add a sample of a poster here, but I think I did that in, on, on the first slide already. Sorry. So I already explained this. We have the heading. This is the heading. You can see the way the heading is. We talk about this earlier. That's the argument of the typeface involves what the size, point size. You can see the size of this. And the size is trying to tell you about something. The main walk on moon. The first thing you see that is those one that the big what's that's why those guys are designed their newspaper or something, or uh, another magazine. What they want you to see first is what the caption, that thing that would draw attention to buy the paper. So for the girls that do their graphics for them, they usually select good size, good points of the typeface in order to pass the information. It means also during your presentation, your PPC, you need to highlight something like this slide I'm talking about, I'm just presenting to you now. The most obvious thing on my slide here is what? Elements of typography, and if you can look, if you look closely, I've used I've used just one um, typeface. The only thing I was I changed the font, and I tried to add either bold or increase the size. These fonts or this typeface and this, they are the same thing. The only thing that made them different is just I increase the point size of this for you to understand that this page you are trying to talk to us about what the element of type elements of typography. So like that coming down up to other parts. So this also we need when we are arranging our, because one of the major things at times when you are giving, you're going for a conference and you're, you, you are given a, 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 a template to design your, your posters, you would try to squeeze your paper, to squeeze your images, to ensure they fit into this. This is where your element of this typography comes in. You know how to arrange your image, your your your, your figures, and I know how to make them understand this part. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about the introduction, the core part of my research, the core result, and all of that. Typography helps to magnify or to amplify the message you want to pass. And what are the things to consider when you're picking a typeface or a font? The size, contrast. When you look at this, this is in contrast to this. And, the, and also the size, we have to be consistent. I just mentioned that now that I will use the same type of typeface throughout this presentation. This one you're seeing up here also, it's just same thing as this. The only difference is I change the color and I reduce the size. Space. When I say space, negative space, look at this. The space you have in between this and this. In between this and this. These are details that you need to take care of. This and this. They are almost the same thing. And this is also very important when you're presenting, you know, when you see some slide, some people, when you, when you prepare presentation slide, you cluster all the 
um what is it called all the text together and you can't even and the truth is just this whenever you're making your presentation and text is just to me nobody reads the text nobody reads it it's what we it's just reality even the one i'm presenting right now i maybe it's because i've, I've stayed too long on the style most of them have finished going through them but the white space that i have all these pieces give it a sense of simplicity and it's easy to comprehend all of this has to do with uh, the, the brain. It affects the sensation as one of our scholars just explains one way, asking the question as a white color. So moving forward, I picked two papers from our from two of our scholars here, or maybe just three of our scholars. One is for engineer Shogu and one is for Dr. Uh, engineer Ode and Dr. Engineer Bashir. We discussed about color and we've also discussed about typeface. When you look at this paper by the Dr. Engineer Shogu, everything that we have explained today is in it. We talk about color. We talk about typeface. When you look at the space between the text, everything consistent. And this is unique to this journal. Very unique to there. You see the way the abstract is this. And you can see also the colors. The, these are abstracts. The size, the typeface, you can see the space for the introduction, you can see the way this is arranged, you can see this. All of these are before under what the science of what typography. Coming to this other paper, you can see this is also unique to them, to this journal. Whenever you see you are this journal from Journal of Plant Production, when you say that this is from I I I E or something, you can see also the way. This is arranged. Now, how do we install, how do we download and install the uh, fonts? Because as we say, typography is all about what? Fonts and typefaces. So how to do this, I'll put these, uh, these two fonts, this side, uh, uh, two links, these links, they are free. You can download font size, uh, fonts, typefaces there for you to use on your system depending on what you, you need, provided you know the name of the word, the type of the phones. So I'm going to show you also just a quick uh, uh, description of how to do that. So I'm already on my phones.com, as you can see. So if you know the type of phone that you're looking for, let's say I'm looking for this Roberto, I can click on it. When you look at here from Google, it's telling you that this has other styles. You can see this is a single this is the name of the, the, the font or the typeface, and these are the fonts. The variety, you have the thing under the thing italics, all of this. Then how do you install this? Let's say I, I am told to use this type this typeface. You just come here, you download. I'm downloading it as a family. everything here well, we can see in this phone that i just downloaded now or just clear it i'll be using phones now we can see this phone there about when you remove this license every other thing that we have is about chef we have about chef very very end of this uh, font size Let's say I need this. I need this. What I will just do just to double click. I come to install. And I click install. That's how it, it should be installed. I think it's done. So let's go back to our slide. If let's see if we can access this opening I'm going to open a new page. I'm going to copy this text here. Put it here. 
a name of the phone that we just download is what is Roboto or something. I think it's Roboto Black. It's already installed. Roboto Mono, Roboto Black. Roboto Black is not here. Ah, I need to close this. I need to close and open it again. So I have to go out first. You need to close, then you reopen the slide before you can see it on your page there. We're on what slide? I think we're on the last slide here. So let's say I'm, I want to change this to that robot or something. I just go to the you can see we have it here now and that's all so the second method and uh, the second site where you can download fonts for free also is this the fonts.com so let's say i need this font and you can see when you look at this site here now you can you see the, the contributor and anyone that is free you see free and you can use for personal use the one i can use for commercial they are there so let's say once uh, when you know the name of the fonts you can search for the fonts by alphabet or something uh, let me just pick this randomly is this free you need to do it before you can use Let's go back. Turn up so. So I'm gonna download this font, Highland Roslin. Download. Same way you you extracts. Let me extract. So as I've done the earlier, you double click. You can see the variant of this by size. You just click install. And as I've installed it now, you would be able to access it on anything on your Windows or any application on your Windows. Let's say your Photoshop, you can access it there. If you're doing video editing, any of your software, you can access it immediately when you finish installing it on the system. So I'm going to access, but I, before I can access, as we did earlier, we have to close and open again. Oh. We can search for his phone. I think it's Harlan Rosalind. Ah, this is it. The text the you can see she, and you can just so it's very easy to do to install. So let's say you're giving it a, 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 a template for a poster that you should do that. You need to and you don't know the you don't know the fonts or you don't have the fonts on your system you can download and also use them now i think we're almost coming to the end of the class so we're going to do a brain teaser now and it's going to be for everyone to just see or if we can still remember our, our physics what colors constitute black color The first question, does anyone, what color constitutes black color? Four colors. Can you say that again, please? 
is it all the primary colors or the second? You know, we talked about primary colors and second colors. <sighs> one of the primary colors is one of is is there, but it's not all the primary colors. It's, it's it consists of two secondary colors. That is is a, a guy, two secondary color and one primary color. Does anyone has an idea of this? Cyan, magenta, magenta, and yellow. We remember yellow is, is a primary color. Yellow is primary color. It's yellow, you have red and blue. So if you want a black color, you mix all of these three colors together to get black. Then I think the second question is very simple. What colors constitute the white color? This is opposite. You have two primary colors and one secondary color. Uh, wow, one correct. Uh, okay, good. You have to it's red, green, blue. Green here is the secondary color. And we know green is what? It's blue and what? It's blue and yellow. When you add blue to yellow to green. So white color, if you want the white color, it's red, green, blue. Now this I saw on the program this morning when I was watching one TVC TVC program. On the program, there is the what is usually on that program is about 10 minutes program. The any weird text online, they say from Twitter, Twitter or something, and some people post, they just cut them and talk about those texts. So somebody now posted this question. This he said, black is a color, white is also a color. Then why is black and white TV not a color TV? <laughs> so that is going to be as I mean, that is submit by next week. I don't have the answer now. So with this, we have come to the end of the class. Thank you all for listening. And thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator, over to you. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator. Hello. Is that more little or yak bear? Yeah, we'll wait for him. <laughs> that one's pretty vernacular. I'm sorry. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. So if there's any question, oh, any concern. Sorry, I... Just went to the toilet before. Oh, man. That's the truth. <laughs> so if there's any question or concern as regards the two okay. areas that we did, as I've told you earlier, is that today is kind of full of theories. And by next class, we're going to be having our eyes on a lot of things as regards our charts, the presentation preparation, and how we mix all of what we're learning today. So for those that are not around today, for us to just catch up with the next class, then we should watch the video after it's posted on our YouTube channel. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, our honorable scholar, uh, uh, investment of engineer Mutaro Adebayo. We really, we, we really appreciate the the lecture you, you just gave just now. Actually, I missed some part of the lecture because uh, my network went off, so I have to go 
and restart it all over again. But oh. nevertheless, I was able to gather some uh, information that could be that is very fighter. Like I said in the first uh, session when we had uh, with uh, Dr. Adelodon, that NSA is blessed with a lot of uh, people with experience. When you look at uh, today's presentation, is about it's like an interactive, not like it's an interactive class, and and this is kind of something we actually that actually like bring people like when you have a session like this, when you have an interactive interactive session like this, it's like calling the attention of people uh, to the program. Like you are able to listen, gain one or two things. When we had a uh, during the last episode, last two episodes, it was a kind of different session where we have to listen to the instructor and our instructor was able to give good justice to the two session like today we have another program on handing up uh, stuff but since uh, we are just starting with this and our instructor has already told us that this is going to for today's uh, lecture is going to be like a full of theory even with this kind of theory, we are able to gain one or two things. Like it's kind of theory that involve a uh, practical stuff because we are able to know how to match some colors together to like to get another color. How we can make a best uh, test color for different background. And uh, he also mentioned something about uh, typographic where we he discuss different styles and some other stuff that acts uh, that is best for us in order to make a good uh, presentation for our research. Thank you so much uh, at our honorable scholar. If there is any question from the house, please feel free to send it to our uh, instructor. Maybe he can within some minutes. Though we still have a lot of time because the program is still is slated for two hours, and now we've spent just one hour on the dots. So I think uh, if we have any question, we can just uh, roll it out so that our instructor can uh, do justice on that. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Go on, sir. Ah. Presentation. Uh, for, uh, for example, what I know, if it's um, PDF, if your paper is in PDF, the the font size of PDF. I really don't know how to do that. But if it's in PowerPoint, you don't need to even install it. You don't you don't need to um what is it called? You can copy the font and paste it in your Google to look for what name is this type of font. Or in the other way for you to use it, what you can simply do, for example, like the one I downloaded the other time, is just for you to match properties. That's what I can remember for now. And that I think I will also do a search on that on how to do the reverse engineering to know what name of what the, the name of the name of the, uh, the font is. So going back again, if it's PDF, I don't know how to do that. But if it is in PPT like this, you can always match properties. When you just speak, for example, like this now, let's say this, and it's not installed, it's not installed on the system. You just downloaded it. Let's say you just download the all uh, a, a free template of PPC. Just and I need to change this. Oh, can you see my screen? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sharing the screen. Can you see it now? Can you see it? Uh -huh. Now, let's say most of the time, let's say this one is not installed on, on the system. It will show that it's there, but you cannot use it. So the name is there. Just copy the name like this and paste it on, on Google. If the free template is on 
P a PPT like this. But if it's on PDF, I don't know how to do that for now. I also need to research on that. So let's say you don't even want to download the, the font and install. Just copy this, just as we know. Just copy. Let's say I want to use this, the last fonts on this. I say, this is this now. I just match property, that's all. It becomes this. So I don't need to install it and I can use it. But at times, that's, this is how we even mentioned during our, maybe in the next class, when it comes to how to manage your font, it's saying you're going for a, a, a presentation for a, a conference and you already have your own customized fonts and you don't want to change the font and you still cannot see, let's say you're using a PPT or a Microsoft or Microsoft or a PPT or a PowerPoint of higher version or lower version, the first thing that will happen to you is when you use that system there, everything that you have done is to just change. How do you do that? How do you change that? That's also going to explain in the next class. So in a nutshell, if it's in PPT, if it's in PDF, that I don't know how to do the reverse engineering, which I will also look for how to do that. I'll find out how you can do that. But if it's a free uh, template like this one that we have here, you can always match properties. Just like clicking this, and this, and match with this, it changes. So I hope that answers your question. I can hear you. Um, let me see that. Um, who is this place? Can you hold on, please? I'm reading, I'm trying to read the, the text on for here. You can use Ctrl D, select the font, and reveal the embedded. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I also learned new things now. Thank you so much. Okay, can you go on the engineer? Watch it. Sorry about the movie. I can hear you. Image. So that's, I don't know also, I would have to find out, I will not have a question. Go ahead. Anything, yeah. Usually, if like in a, if I'm presenting in our lab for this, like this, I would not be allowed to print this on our system <laughs> because practically it will just finish the color once. So what we usually do is to just, for example, let's say I still want to, I still want to have this color printed. The only thing I can do, if professor accepts that, is to print, reduce the size of my printing. Can you see my screen? We all know this. Is to use this, <laughs> maybe two on a slide, or I even I've been on. I was in a class where they, they did even six on a on a on a page like this, and it was this. They have six on each slide, like this. So and with that, I think you can have your printouts. And uh, uh, apart from that, I, I don't have more, more information as regards that. If you want this to come out properly, you need to just reduce the size and print them like that. And if your lab allows that like, people use things like that way, I think so no much information as regards that for now. Uh, uh, yeah, continue. As regards poster, thank you. Continue.
for the poster, what is usually done is that you you don't use your normal printer you have in the in the lab to do that. It's usually you go to the commercial printers. When you do for the commercial printer, you know the way you do the color separation. For those that use color draw very well, they know the way to do their color separation and print everything that you have exact. Just the way as if you're printing a poster, or a poster for a movie or something. So that they won't change the color. So they have their own specialized printer that you, you need to pay some amount to make. It. But if you're doing on the normal printer that always a text change or something, you can't do that. But for posters, these printers, those people that, that, that do print, like in this school now, if you go to you can uh, can they poster close to Mom's touch there, they have a variety of printer that does this commercial printing. So as for for that is a, a kind of commercial printing that those that will print know how to ensure that you have your right image without changing all the colors that you, that you have done that you have that you've already designed on your on your poster i hope that answers your questions yeah thank you so much oh, you, you can you're free Canva. I, I mentioned it earlier while I was explaining. I, I'm, can you see the screen right now? Do you are you talking about this code? P I P A. P A N. Pantone. Ah, that I, I can't remember now, but I know it's uh, the reason why I didn't go much deep into these uh, tones, shade, and things is because I think I felt that for those that do much more graphics that are not researchers, is the reason why I didn't like do more research on that. And when you talk about pantone, I think it's something that has to do with things like this. You have a variety of colors you can use. You have eels, you have these, uh, oh, you have saturation. If you're talking about the, what is it called? Uh, oh, this popular software, you doing training on that, you need to know how to use those pantone very well. If you're doing a commercial, you know, you can use your Microsoft PowerPoint to make videos. You can use it to make adverts. You can use it to make all these short commercials. You need to learn a lot about the, the pantone. But on this uh, software, when uh, Mr. Ashraf starts his uh, class as regards the Canva, I think we can learn more on, on those. And also uh, in my next class also, I'll also work on that and give us more explanation on how to do that for those that want to know more about pantones. That's, that's answer your question. However, this all these sites I, I will embed them in my ppt and as soon as we conclude our class now i'll send the pdf on to our, our main group so it's just a matter of clicking and you can access the the website so i hope that's also answer your question you're welcome doctor uh, i need to embed this immediately now any other question the workaround I use for identifying fonts on images is kind of dark method where I upload the image of the text to the font square of the identification. Uh, Somewhat, uh, sorry, who is, who is this NCBS? Lab? Yeah, actually, I wanted to ask about that. Who is NCBS? Because Give me not a guy. Yeah, I can dance, so I don't know who that is. I will discuss with this person more to learn more about what he's talking Hello, about. Mr. NCBS Lab. Can you talk to us, please? <laughs> please. Like your name now? Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I think you should talk to us. Oh, ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Musa. <Musa. laughs> All right, any other question? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the... 
So I'm going to embed the. Uh, I think I, I already did that. So engineer, what's the call? I think when you look at this, which of the slide, this slide, on this slide below, when you click this, after you convert it to media, right, when so. you click this, you can go. You can just go to your color calculator where you can make color and no money about color and code. Um, I'm going to work on saving it right away. Um, Oh, we get it. Mr. Moderator, you can go ahead. I'm just trying to see if I can send it in proof. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, our instructor, for this uh, lecture. We look forward to have you another time, since this lecture is kind of serious one. And uh, we should all don't forget that our instructor, at the beginning of this lecture, he said something about Asian and it's a certificate at the end of the whole uh, program. And um, he said some condition about before he can give the certificate out. He said some condition that the first one is you must have at least eighty percent of the attendance, and um, the second one is like it will be giving out maybe a very short uh, assignment like a hand on one, where we used to practice maybe after the submission that would also be a part of the condition he set for the before he can issue out the certificate. So thank you everyone for having you today, and I hope we. Uh, the other time, like the next time we are having our instructor, and the subsequent time we are having another instructor, like Mr. Ashraf and, and our doctor, uh, uh, there is one particular name we used to call him. Uh, yeah, Yoruba name, I've forgotten. Dr. Olabi. So by the time we'll be having them, I hope we all be around and uh, make some uh, kind of presence which we gear up our instructor, each of our instructor, to be able to like have good package for us. So thank you everyone for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend. Ah, uh -uh. Oh, Basi. Uh, thank you. Anasio, move your corruption. Anasio. I did. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go.